Hello, hello. Happy full moon in Leo. Hope everyone is enjoying the energies. It takes some getting used to having Pluto in Aquarius. It's a pretty powerful energy and the shift can be very, very draining. So if you have had uh, restless nights, you know, or having to like rest more than usual, then that's completely normal. Um, having a regular sleep schedule for me has been uh, a challenge, but you know, it's like the automatic uh, response to, you know, feel guilty because you're not in line with the rest of the world. Um, but you know, if you're paying attention to your body and giving it what it needs, then it's your body who uh, will be appreciative. Like I said, just take care of yourself and drink a lot of water. There's a lot of, um, the solar flares are super active right now. It's like wiping out all of those, those old, heavy, dense energies that the world doesn't need anymore. And I mean, like I said before, like the South Node in Capricorn for Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto, um, we've just completed. So Pluto is, has finished, well, in September, it'll dip back into Capricorn one last time at 29 degrees, but after November, we will be done with Capricorn energies as far as like the generational planets and the south node will go back to capricorn um i mean not to go too far ahead but there's a lot of shifts that are happening so it takes a lot of um energy so the feelings of restlessness and uh, maybe even feeling lost you know there's like this uh excitement restlessness and then also the need to like take it easy so nothing wrong with that this full moon is happening on the 25th of January at uh, 9.53 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at 5 degrees. And 5 degrees is, <clears throat> in degree theory, connected to Leo. So it's like a doubling down of those Leo energies. And in my last video about the Pluto ingress into Aquarius, I mentioned the planetary nodes. And Aquarius and Leo are the um, south and north node of Neptune. So, you know, we have the North Node of the Moon, which right now the North Node is in Aries and the South Node is in Libra. And so the nodes of Neptune are in Leo, the North Node is in Leo, and the South Node is in Aquarius. And technically, the nodes um, are between 14 and I, I want to say um, 20, wait, it is, for the Neptune is 10 to 14, Leo is the North Node <coughs> of Neptune, and then um, South Node is 10 to 14 degrees of Aquarius. So we have a while until we, um, until Pluto hits those degrees, but we are in the energies of those, uh, of those signs. And so with the sun in Aquarius and the moon in Leo, we were being asked to really like come into our own and like harness those creative juices. It's kind of like a creative awakening for us all collectively and really doing things from the heart. So not really um, worrying about what it's going to produce, what it's going to yield, if there's going to be any sales or profit from whatever we produce. It's more about creating something for the sheer enjoyment of it um, because it makes you feel good, you know, whether it's dancing, um, painting, writing, um, cleaning, you know, raising children, it could be anything, making jewelry, uh, making memes, you know. And with these nodes being tied to Neptune, Neptune is all about spirituality and um, the consciousness, and it can be that unconditional love. Um, it's like a dissolving of the ego. The things that we are doing right now need to be in alignment with ourselves. Like there's gotta be a heart alignment, like a coherence with how we feel about what we're producing and the tie to spirituality and like having that having that connection to spirituality and having it expressed through what you create is pretty much the focus of, of, you know, the energies from here on out because we are letting go of those Capricorn energies that have been telling us that there's this hierarchy of um, production, like capitalism. And the only way to make a living is if you follow this formula, which is so Capricorn, so, so Capricornian, like you follow this formula, you, you you know, you abide by these steps the way it's been done traditionally. And this is like 2000 plus years of um, these traditions, you know, like programming, conditioning, 
believing that this systematic way of doing things is the only way to do things, is the only way to live, only way to make a living, the only way to, um, like, what do you call it when it's uh, your bread and butter, your livelihood? Like, there's, there's a million ways to, like, create your own livelihood. And why is it called livelihood if it's not bringing you joy? Earning your livelihood or, you know, this is my li livelihood has a new meaning. So it has a more authentic meaning. And we want to move more into that and let go of the pressure of having to produce in order to survive. I mean, that's a very Capricornian um, way of thinking is having to do, do certain things in order to survive the long haul. Survive is going to be redefined from here on out. Um, I mean, it's, it is the first full moon of the new year. It's the first full moon with Pluto in Aquarius. And that's, that's a major shift, which is another reason why I like this energy feeling, you know, kind of restless and drained and tired all at the same time and excited um, is hitting us right now. So it is like a lot of first of the first. And with the North Node in Aries, Aries is all about being the first. And Mars in Capricorn, Mars being the ruler of Aries, is really like pushing us and driving us toward trying new things, like doing things differently. And that's another thing I want to mention about this new moon that is happening on the 25th. The same day, Mars will be squaring Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer, and it's considered to be a centaur in Greek mythology. Centaurs link the realms, and Chiron is the centaur that links Saturn and Uranus. And Saturn is um, representative of repression and limitations and restrictions. And Uranus is related to like thinking outside of the box, going beyond the limitations, going beyond the limits, um, breaking the rules. And so Chiron being the wounded healer is where, you know, there was some sort of wounding or punishment or some sort of scar where the efforts that were being made in, you know, being adventurous and like Aries is about being the first, being that um, warrior, that adventurer and like seeing what else is out there. And so the link between Saturn and Uranus makes a lot of sense for Chiron to be the wounded healer. And so this square between Mars and Chiron at 15 degrees um, happens at the same time or the same day as the full moon in Leo. And so this is going to be the kind of energy where you want to, you'll probably feel like you're being um, pushed around or like there's some sort of tension or challenge from a higher up, uh, an elderly person or someone of authority that is trying to tell you what to do or delegate or um, basically be that, that power of authority that has been pushing you to um, open up this wound. And Chiron just went direct in December and so this is like a revisiting of uh, an old wound. Most of us have Chiron in Aries because it's it's um, the way, I guess the way it travels, it spends the most time in Aries. I mean, it's about being, um, having a wound around not being seen or not being heard. And at 15 degrees, 15 is related to Gemini, which is in degree theory, connected to communication, information, um, also traveling, you know, anything that has to do with exchanging ideas or learning. Um, you know, it could have been school as well, um, or some sort of like shaming or insecurity related to, you know, your childhood or upbringing or um, like themes around education possibly. And so with Mars being the North Node ruler, this is a revisiting of the moon that is designed to help us heal and move past because the North Node again is our point of destiny. It's uncomfortable because it's a direction that we haven't been in before, but it's designed to help us get past our fears and be brave. Like North Node in Aries is all about being courageous and brave and, you know, going for it and being fearless. And there can be impulsivity to this energy as well, but it's also asking us to, you know, trust ourselves, like trust our instincts. And, you know, Capricorn is that authority figure, you know, powers that be that 
have given us the rules and like has been telling us to like do this and do that in order to be successful but if we have like the instinct in us that tells us that you know I don't align with that then that needs to be respected and so it's a practice of really we're thinking about how to respond and you know the best most efficient way to respond and on Sunday the 28th the moon will also be in Virgo which is an earth sign and so there's so much going on there's going to be a trine to Jupiter and Taurus another earth sign and then Jupiter will be sextiling Saturn and Pisces and so then there's going to be this opposition between Saturn and the moon so with the Saturn moon opposition we could really be feeling that urge that we're being asked to um, make changes for our own good and with Saturn and Pisces that could be related to you know spirituality maybe it's drinking more water or drinking less alcohol or really any you know it could be anything related to water spirituality you know liquids uh, anything that helps us escape and let's you know that can be on a spectrum of you know low to high vibe type of activities whether it's meditation or escapism through drugs and alcohol you know there's a structure that needs to be put in place around those things and this can also be um, related to sleep routines as well um, maybe even dream work uh, it could play out in a number of different ways um, but Venus is also at six degrees in Capricorn so there's this really cool like um, it's called a minor minor grand trine when two planets are in the same element which in here is uh, Cap Venus and Capricorn and Jupiter and Taurus and those they are both making a sextile to Saturn in Pisces and you know with Venus being the ruler of the South Node in Libra it, it's having the awareness of realizing what values we can let go of like the old values that we were holding on to no longer really have a place going forward you know it's kind of these these old values are obsolete and they don't really fit into the new paradigm that we're cre creating for ourselves um, and so that's going on this weekend I mean let's see there's also the um, square to Jupiter the moon square Jupiter so there's going to be um, the moon in Leo and Jupiter in um, Taurus is going to be that feeling of like maybe an overindulgence where you know the moon in Leo wants like luxury and fine dining and like all of these um you know experiences jupiter in taurus is going to uh kind of like triple or quadruple that there can be that challenge of um, going past your limits um because scorpio can really go deep into escapism and it can be a good time but maybe that's the kind of energy that is required to balance out the um outcome of the square since Scorpio does like to go all in, going past the point of no return. And so it could be that type of experience where you go so far that, you know, that's the, uh, that's the moment where you make some major life decisions. And it could be that you are so um, involved in your creative endeavors and, you know, you're just going at it and like really making breakthroughs with your creative process. And you, you know, reach this aha moment of, you know, I'm going to quit my job and pursue my own, um, my own passions finally and start your own business. Or, I mean, that's also the energy of entrepreneurship. Mars does rule Scorpio, um, traditionally speaking. And so Mars being the ruler of Scorpio and Aries is the ruler of our North Node. And that's the direction that we want to go in. And, oh, Uranus, Uranus being the ruler, the modern ruler of Aquarius is going direct and it is going direct on the, is it the 26th? So Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, which is where we have the sun in opposition to the moon right now. And so Uranus being the ruler, uh, modern ruler of Aquarius is pretty important. It's been retrograde for about six months. And so it, going direct is going to revisit those areas in our life that has to do with the Taurus themes of our life, stability, um, money, the way our livelihood is also related to Taurus. Um, so Uranus has been in Taurus and has been shaking things up and has been really like 
making us uncomfortable with how we secure our stability and how we support ourselves. The foundations that we've built for so many years, generations, is um, has been cracking. We have to figure out how to build new foundations given the new information that we've learned about. And so this is going to be a shakeup in how we earn our livelihood. And this is in correlation to the full moon in Leo that is really encouraging us to come into our own, be more creative, do things from the heart, be more heart-centered without, with, with less focus on like the productivity or the um, what it's going to yield. Because we're letting go of that kind of ideology of having to, you know, be a widget maker. Um, we are doing things from the heart and we're doing things that is spiritually aligned and that serves the collective. And keeping this in mind, you know, if we continue to strive to um, act and be from the heart, then the blessings that can come from this, because Jupiter is also in Taurus, you know, and they're going to eventually meet up. Jupiter and Uranus will eventually meet up in April, April 20th. And they will be conjunct at, at 21 degrees on April 20th. And so you've got the planet of blessings, wisdom, um, justice, meeting up with the planet of disruption, change, sudden insight. And this is taking place in Taurus, which is our stability, money, our livelihood. And so there's going to be a massive expansion of disruption in the stability area of our life. And it's it's really going to it's really going to change your life. So with this um, conjunction with uh, Jupiter and Uranus, Jupiter being the ruler of Pisces and Sagittarius and Uranus being the ruler of Aquarius, this will take us all really beyond our um, comprehension. You know, this is the kind of lifestyle change that none of us could have ever seen coming. Um, and it's all good. It's all for our inner child. Our future self is going to be taking care of us. And so that's something to look forward to. Um, Uranus coming out of uh, retrograde will be revisiting those topics in um, relation to our stability, where we make our money, our livelihood, and when it comes into conjunction, when it meets up with Jupiter, or when Jupiter meets up with Uranus at 21 degrees, 21 relating to the Sagittarius themes, this could be in regard to um, foreign lands, this could be religion, this could be um, our belief systems, uh, world affairs, travel. Um, it's also connected to um, astrology as well, actually. I mean, Uranus is definitely connected to astrology, and then Sagittarius is the truth seeker and goes beyond um, goes beyond our borders to seek information. Um, it's no accident that Uranus will be going direct a couple days after the full moon after the full moon, after the square to Chiron, and it will be the same day that Mars and Mercury square the nodes. So we're gonna be at this crossroads where we can either fall back into old patterns in our Libra areas of life where we could be people pleasing or holding on to relationships that have outran its course. We're just, you know, it's time to, uh, we've, we know that we've outgrown these relationships, but we are still not doing anything about it. Um, or Mars, Mercury squaring the nodes, or we can move into the direction of the Aries North node and be courageous and be selfish and, you know, break free, be, be brave and, you know, set out on your own adventure. And so with Uranus going direct, this is going to be a huge shakeup to our stability. Um, I mean, that's one way it could play out. Uh, our foundations could be, um, dismantled and there could be a you know feeling of free falling because you have no idea what's going to happen next but again I think the the test here is how much trust we're going to put into the universe because we can already kind of feel you know the excitement that is that it has been building but you know the programming of being fearful of not having you know a steady income or not having that 
stability of having someone there to, you know, uh, whatever it might be, um, just someone there beside you uh, could have that feeling of um, void that you might not be used to for a little while, but after a while, the quiet can actually be peaceful. So it could be a delightful surprise, especially as it's, uh, as Uranus and Jupiter come together at 21 degrees in April, and they will be making um, a cooperative, um, a cooperative aspect to Neptune and Saturn. Saturn, the Saturn is going to take a while for Saturn to catch up. Saturn will be, it's currently at five degrees. By the time April comes around, it will be, uh, let's see, Saturn will be at 18, 16 degrees. Mars will be in Pisces. Mars will be in Pisces at 26 degrees and Neptune will be at 28. And so these Pisces energies, sextiling Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, water and Earth are very compatible. And it's uh, like being having the potential of really manifesting your dreams and like really shaking things into place. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful energy there. So all the things that are falling away during this time and asking us to, you know, come into our own and not worry about, you know, how it appears, you know, like not having to keep up with the Joneses and worrying about the next paycheck. You know, we just have to trust in the universe that will be provided for and things are going to turn out even better than we expected. Um, so is that it about this Leo full moon? I mean, it's a beautiful um, setup, you know. And after Uranus goes direct, all planets will be direct until April 1st, which will be when Mercury retrogrades. And we'll worry about that when we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But in the meantime, between now, which is like around the end of February to beginning of April, we have all the planets direct. And so we can proceed with confidence as long as we've been in our integrity to be able to proceed and know that whatever is happening right now is for our highest highest good and for our future selves and for our divine purpose and if we you know understand that the energies that has been siphoned um, from us to fuel a certain agenda um, once we understand that we are able to shift our energy and use it to benefit us like we can really come into our own power and not give our power away and like i mean literally the television has been the programming tool that's been used to suck our energy out of us and so we have to take that back and turn the tv off turn the news off not get sucked in i mean it's it is uh quite a um mind-blowing eye-opening realization to know how our energy has been used for so long um, but once we move through that realization we can take the steps to really um, we can take the steps to redirect our energy toward a greater good toward our creativity and our joy and our dreams um, so just keep that in mind and trust in the universe you know there is nothing to fear fear is um, false evidence appearing real I believe that's the acronym from Ralph Smart um, false evidence appearing real but yeah it's gonna be a wild 20 something years with Pluto and Aquarius so it's best to stay flexible stay grounded you know take take the time schedule in the time to you know look up at the sky connect with the birds and the trees and the ground and breathe in the fresh air you know appreciates all the beauty around us and not get sucked into all this you know information age agey stuff I mean super captivating don't get me wrong and there's a lot of information to be found to to realize like a lot of unlearning to do which is part of the process um, but just keep the uh, the North Node in Cancer and the South Node in Capricorn for Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto is is a 
game changer for me and like just realizing how being connected to the earth and honoring the um, mother archetype and the food, the nature is the focus and has been the focus in our lifetime well, like from from here on out for at least for another 300 years or so um so yeah hopefully that was helpful and uh have the most fun and you know have the most fun um okay all right thanks for listening take care